Right, in this uh, video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a fork from the default cube in Blender. So, uh, when we start Blender, we, have, we are in the top view, okay, and uh, orthographic view, and then we have the cube uh, right in the center here. So, I'm just going to tumble it down, right down to here, and I'm going to transform this uh, cube into a fork. Now, uh, with the cube selected, okay, right mouse click is selected, you press tab to go to edit mode, and uh, the first thing you want to do is just to flatten this. Scale, press S, and then lock in the Z axis, and then gonna press S again to scale, and then lock it in the Y axis. All right, so I'm gonna press uh, Control R to just give it Control R, give it one edge loop right about here, and uh, by pressing left click right, uh, you notice that the edge loop is still selected. So I'm gonna press S, followed by X to lock in the X axis, to give it a taper around here. Okay, and uh, maybe I'll just switch over to face mode, control tab, face mode, uh, right mouse click select this face, press E to extrude, and I'm just going to press S to scale uh, slightly downwards here, right, just to create the handle here. Uh, we'll come back and work on the handle later, but now we want to create the prongs of the fork. Alright, um, well, in uh, my previous demonstrations, um, I showed that if you want to um, add subdivisions here you can add it since all these are four-sided faces across the length here if you press ctrl R and you roll out the mouse you can add edge loops but the problem is you are adding unnecessary uh, detail across the whole fork so you you want to actually stop the edge loop from running across so one way would be to I'm just gonna add one edge loop ctrl R one edge loop here Okay, and then just press middle mouse so that it will be stuck in the middle. I'm just going to scale this slightly up in the X axis. And I'm going to cut, uh, switch to face mode. I'm going to select this face and the bottom face. And I'm going to switch over to the top view. By pressing 7 on my Numic key, I'm going to press K to bring up the knife tool. And I'm going to switch to exact. Okay, and I'm going to press. Uh, so when I press exact uh, left mouse click, then I have the knife icon. I'm gonna hold down the control so they will snap at this corner. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut one edge here, and then press enter. So you're gonna end up with a shape uh, looking like this. All right. So uh, okay, the bottom face is actually cut to a nice V shape here. So I'm gonna cut another edge right across this face. So I'm gonna right mouse click and select this face. Press K. Go to exact and then holding down the control, go to start at a corner here, left mouse click, and then move to the next point that you want to cut to and then cut and press enter. Alright. So now we have a face that is uh, backed by this uh, three three sided faces. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to okay, let's see how we're gonna subdivide this. Uh, let me see if I can subdivide this. Uh, no, not this way. I'm going to do. Okay, uh, I'm going to use the knife tool. Okay, I can use the loop cut, control R, middle mouse click. Okay, so that I can cut the uh, edges, the four sided faces out like that. Okay, but the problem is we have this uh, multi pole point. Okay, that's spread out like this. So we can reduce uh, the subdivision artifacts right by uh, merging these two faces into four-sided faces. This one as well, these two opposing triangular faces. Press F to combine them together. Press F to combine this. We'll go to the bottom here and do the same. Select these two, press F, press F, press F to combine these two faces. Okay, now that you have the dimensions cut properly. We can select these four faces. Okay, the four faces in front. Now if the faces you if you accidentally select the face behind, it's a good idea to switch over to occlude background geometry so that uh, you only see the faces facing the camera. So right now I'm gonna press A to deselect. Okay, and I'm gonna right mouse click holding down the shift and add to selection here. Okay, so now we can start to extrude the prongs of the fork here. So if we press E You'll notice that the extrude window pops out and it gives you a choice of region or individual faces. 
Now in this case, if you choose region, all the faces are going to be extruded and they're going to form a single piece. Now, so that's not what you want. So you're going to press Ctrl Z to undo that. Uh, so with the faces still selected, I'm going to press E. But this time I'm going to choose the second option, individual faces. So this time, although it looks the same as the previous, but uh, in, in reality, uh, all these faces, if I select just one of them, are actually separated as you can see. All right, let me undo that. So now, I want to select back all these faces and I want to scale them down. But if you look at your scale orientation, the scale pivot, okay, right now it is set at the uh, medium, all right, the median point. So what you want to do is uh, you want to switch this to individual centers. So if I were to uh, scale at medium point, all the faces are going to scale together. But if I'm going to switch over to individual centers and press S to scale, you notice that now it scales at its own uh, center. So now that I've extruded one section of the prong, I'm going to press E again to extrude individual faces. I'm going to pull it out just by moving my mouse up and down. Just one more section here. Okay, and you want to press S to scale it down slightly. I'm going to press E again to extrude individual faces. Okay, you can just move your uh, mouse up and down. Press S again to scale it down so you have a sharp point. So essentially now we have the uh, base shape of the fork. I'm going to switch over to the side view. And I'm just going to flatten everything slightly. So press A to select everything. Well actually, I think it would be a good idea just to flatten the front. So press A to deselect. Press B. Okay, our occlude background geometry button is on. So you want to turn this off so that you will select all the uh, subcomponents behind. So I'm going to press B. Grab and select the front. Press scale in the Z axis. Okay, right now my individual centers is still on, so that's why the scaling is not working. So let me uh, change it to median point. Okay, now notice just now as I made a mistake when I'm scaling, and if if you do not want to uh, to scale like this, all you have to do is just right mouse click and then you jump again. Okay, I just press Z to switch to wireframe mode. Press scale followed by Z axis so that uh, it will flatten slightly like this. Alright, so now you can see we have all the necessary detail in front uh, for the fork but uh, while we maintain the handle uh, at relatively low uh, resolution. Okay, so now uh, what we want to do is we compress Z to turn to shaded mode again. Uh, we want to bend the fork so that it has a slight bend. So if you go to the side view, okay, I can start by uh, with the faces still selected, just press rotate in this view. I'm going to rotate this slightly upwards like this. And then I'm going to press Control, uh, okay, not Control Plus, should be Control Minus to reduce the selection of faces. All right. So the the thing about the Control Plus, Control Minus is that you can actually re gradually reduce the number of faces. Okay, right now this is not working properly, so I should start from the tip of the prongs here. So I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to use this lasso selection tool. I'm just going to press Control, left mouse click, and drag and select the faces at the tip. Okay, so let's go to the side view. Okay, press the uh, the period key or delete key in the number pad so that you focus in the selected objects. Right, I'm going to press R to rotate this slightly, and then I'm going to just press G to bring it down. Press Control Plus to increase selection. So I'm just going to grab this and pull it down. Uh, you can pull it back if you want to, and you can rotate this slightly more if you want. So now, okay, I got a slightly bent fork, so I'm going to press plus to increase the selection again. Go to the side view, press R to rotate, and I'm just going to pull this thing up slightly. Basically, you can just rotate um, until you find the, uh, the bend that you would like. Let's go to the side view again. I'm going to switch over to vertex vertices, press A to press A a couple of times to deselect and select everything, then press B, select like the tip here and then I'm just going to pull this up and rotate this slightly. Okay, I want to give a slight bend here on the fork, so I'm going to press Ctrl R, just insert one edge loop. When you left mouse click on it, you notice the edge loop is still selected. Okay, with your transform manipulator on, or you can press G and Z and then bring this up. Okay, press 3 just to make sure that you don't accidentally move in the um, orthographic view. All right. So now that you have this nicely bent uh, basic fork, you want to subdivide it so that it has this smooth look. So I'm going to subdivide it. 
uh, as you guys learned before, uh, you can add a modifier here uh, and use subserve. But my favorite is to use the control one two three. Now this method will only work uh, if you are uh, using the hundred and one keyboard. Now if you're using a laptop and you enable your uh, let me just pull this down slightly. If you enable your system open gel emulate num numpad, this control one two three will not work. So you need to disable this if you're using your laptop. Uh, but I advise again that you guys use a 101 keyboard, full size keyboard with number pads uh, on the right, so that this uh, this method will work. All right, so I'm going to press Control uh, One. So you're going to subdivide one level, so you can see it has been subdivided one level. If I press Control Two, now it's subdivided two levels. And press Control Three, now it's subdivided three levels. And you can see the the small the fork is looking much better now. But uh, what you have to do is you have to apply another uh, action, right, to make this smooth. Because if you look closely, everything is unsmooth and it looks faceted. So if you look under your button tools panel, there is this, uh, under the uh, links and materials, there's this set smooth. So you're, if you're in object mode, everything will be selected. Okay, if I press tab to switch over to object mode, previously I'm in edit, so object. You can say set smooth. Now you can look closely, everything now looks smooth. And uh, essentially your fork is now done. And if you want to tweak it further, you can go to edit mode. Okay, you can still access the low resolution cage. I can press A to a couple of times to uh, select all and deselect. Okay, this is just to ensure that I do not select any stray vertices. Holding down the control, left mouse click and select. Uh, use the lasso tool to draw to select. Okay, or you can use B and then drag a box over. And just rotate this and then I'm going to pull this up slightly. Press A to deselect. Press B, select this group here, rotate, and then just pull it down. Okay, I want to model in such a way that the fork appears. I'm going to press B now. The thing about border select, which I realize, is that if, when you press B, you need to wait for like half a second before you can left click and drag. Sometimes uh, this tool is like a little bit not responsive. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect, and once I'm happy with it, okay, so. Okay, uh, maybe I want the neck to be a little bit slimmer, so go to edit mode again. Press Control. Okay, uh, you can press Control R. Okay, and go move your cursor to the edge here. Click and then move it closer, and you can see with the two edges very close together, together you can uh, define the neck much better. Press A to deselect, and uh, let's say you want the prongs here to be a little bit more defined. You can press Control R. Add one edge loop here to bring it back down a little bit. Or if you like, you just middle mouse click and you'll be right at the center. And just to repeat for all these prongs. Control R, Control R, and then that's it. So press tab to get out of edit mode. And essentially that's how you model a fork. Okay, so uh, please watch this video several times. And if you're stuck, just rewind to the bit you're not sure. And then uh, take note of these two windows here. So you can see which keys that I'm pressing and which mouse buttons that I'm pressing. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and keep on blendering.